Professor Harry Lincoln, who was one of the pioneers of um, music scholarship, part of the faculty group today. I want to ask you, with, 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 uh, as I've asked other faculty, what brought you to this, this small institution when you came here, this not even formed institution? What was the attraction? Well, I was f finishing a PhD at Western University, and I was interviewed there for a job in Montana and gave it serious thought. And one of the faculty members, uh, or somebody from the office, mu music office, uh, said that uh, I w a request from a place in New York called Harper College was interested in me. I contacted Dr. Barwell and was invited for an interview. It abilities were not what one would expect for, for a person in music. Music we require certain uh, uh, rooms, uh, studios, rehearsal rooms. We had n none of that. But I was attracted by the serious interest in music as part of liberal arts. Uh, I was a performing musician, but I was studying as a musicologist, a music historian, a year in Italy doing research in that area. And the seriousness of the faculty here and the excitement and the hope for an interesting future for a small college. At that time, it was one of two liberal arts units in the State University of New York. And so I had a choice between a going to the far west or going far east, as far as I was concerned, coming originally from Minnesota, uh, studying at Northwestern. And I've never regretted my decision to <laughs> come east rather than west. What, what, what seemed you here? What was the, what, what was the, what are the factors of the university that made you want to stay and thrive here? Well, I enjoyed the collaboration with other faculties. Uh, Ken Lindsay, whom you just talked to, and I, Ken was a musician, but he was a professor of art history. He had been a cellist, and his wife is a fine pianist. I was a musician and a musicologist, but I had very little background in art history. And we collaborated on some of the lectures, humanities course, and I found that, found that very stimulating. I learned a great deal doing that with Ken. And I think in those days, our friends were faculty in other divisions, uh, people in the sciences, social sciences. Nowadays, one tends to be acquainted with people in one's apartment. But it was a small enough college, a small enough faculty that we had a collaboration and cooperation among faculty from different backgrounds and different uh, disciplines. And that carried over to the students. I think the students found this stimulating to have a a course in which, for example, the humanities course where people from literature, philosophy, music, uh, art history, and so forth, all talked about the, the, the items in which they were, the students were studying in that course. Could, could you talk about students a little bit? Uh, you've had both undergraduate and graduate students. These are the graduate students, of course, but in the, the early years, we didn't have many performers. We, we had a very limited facilities. My colleague Alex Gilfell in the 1950s was a pianist, was a flutist, where you can't build a whole music curriculum out of piano and flute. And it wasn't until we got on the new campus with expanded facilities in the 1960s and 70s that we were able to become a full-fledged music curriculum uh, involving especially the performance opportunity. But we did have a group. And fairly early on, we had a wind ensemble. I conducted both of those groups uh, until years later when we specialists in those, those areas. But there was uh, uh, the students, most of the students I taught were students from other disciplines. And that even holds true today. We have a much larger music and more majors, but most of the students in the orchestra, the wind ensemble, the choral groups, are majoring in other subjects other than music, but music is an enrichment for their curriculum and for their whole lifetime experience. I've had the pleasure today of talking to uh, people who had me as a, their teacher way back in the 1950s and 60s and tell me that the one course in the music, 101 as we call it, 
which I've taught for over 40 semesters, that they change their attitude or their background or their experience in music and that they carried that experience has stayed with them the rest of their lives, that it's affected their enjoyment of music ever since. One, one last question. I, I, uh, we're in, sitting in John Casadesu's hall, and uh, um, it, it, it strikes me that, that uh, with the Guarneri Quartet, with so many musical, really distinguished musicians, I, mean, uh, I think uh, Vladimir Horowitz played when I was an undergraduate here, I, I believe. Could you tell me a little bit about what, what your influence on that has been and, 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 and well, how, our that, proc how, how it developed into such a strong... Well, our project in New York City uh, it, it was an advantage. You were able to get members, and we had faculty members in a few cases who commuted from, not only in music, but in other departments, who commuted from New York once a week and uh, taught in the department for a day or two. And, uh, of course, were able to get ensembles and from the metropolitan area. Is, is a big advantage compared to being, a, say, a thousand miles away from New York City or a big city. And the, the Guarneri Quartet was here. Our uh, chairman at that time, Professor Philip Nelson, was a, a dynamic uh, chairman and worked very hard to get uh, name figures and, and high, people of high talent and uh, come, to come to the campus and, uh, and they gave uh, classes and uh, special uh, demonstrations and special, many special concerts, especially the, the uh, New York Woodwind Quintet and the, uh, the famous pianist, Jean Casada Sue. This hall is named after Jean Casada Sue. And uh, the Guarneri Quartet uh, and uh, ensembles like this were a, a valuable addition to the faculty and a great and a stimulus for the students. I've got to ask you just one question as a curiosity. Um, you, you were a pioneer in the application of computation to the research in music. You're one of the very first people in yeah. America to do that. Did you have any idea what, what, what would become? No. What, what, the, what, what, what got you turned on that? It grew, I can't give you the details now, it would take much time. It grew out of my initial research. I was working with manuscripts in the Vatican Library, and I used a technique which goes way back to the 1890s of alphabetizing the opening melody of a, mel of a piece. It's called the incipit, uh, the, the letter names of the notes. Do it with a known repertory, and then of, of composers whom we identify, and I had anonymous materials do the same thing, interfile these cards, alphabetical cards, and spot, ah, here's the same piece in this repertory. They didn't know who it, comp it was just the name of the composer is not given, so we say it's anonymous, but it really was Frescobaldi, for example. And I got into a conversation with the registrar at that time, who was using IBM cards, and uh, the registrar here, Ralph the registrar Richard? at the campus here, yeah, Marie Coney. Oh, okay. And uh, I said, if I put these alphabetical materials on a card, you can sort them by machine, can't you? Rather than my doing it, I have several thousand cards, and that's how I got introduced I, to the computer through the predecessor of the computer, which was the the IBM card, yeah. for, which was sorted mechanically. But later, it became welded with the electronic possibilities. And one thing led to another, so to speak. And I had very good help. We had a computer center which was very supportive of research of faculty, not only in the engineering. I met colleagues from other uh, universities who envied me because they were at an institution which supported use of the computer in engineering, but what's a musician going to do with a computer? Here I was supported. I had help from the programmers in the computer center, and th this gradually evolved into a rather gigantic project of, of uh, doing this thematic recognition among hundreds of composers in 16th century music, which was my 
uh, specialty. And it led to two very large occasions, one from the Yale University Press and one from a press in Canada of thematic index of the Italian madrigal and then later of the Latin motet uh, in the 16th century uh, Italy. Now I must make it clear, I did not work in the field of composition which led into uh, synthesized music and so forth. That, that was another entirely separate field. I was using music, using the computer as a tool for musicological research. Thank you so much. That well, was it's a real pleasure. Thank you.